Happy Halloween. Wait, I'm, I'm having some Italian shit from my espresso time. Espresso time, baby. Salute, bro. <laughs> Salute. Salute. Espresso time. Let's go, baby. Andiamo. Let's go. Espresso time's the best time. You're getting right to it, huh? <laughs> Happy so, Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Sunday scares episode today, baby. Espresso It's going to be very scary today. <laughs> so we got a couple of fun, uh, fun topics to talk about. We're going to add some funny stuff at the end, but... I think we should start with uh, the user questions first. Yeah, so first and foremost, welcome everybody to Espresso Time, the best time. There's always time for Espresso Time. Um, so what we do in this segment, we ask you guys a little Q&A on our Instagram. You guys hit us with the questions, and we'll hit you with the responses during the Espresso Time. Uh, so first, we're going to do the first wave of the Instagram questions. Mm-hmm. I mean, Sabina are going to answer those. And after, we have a nice little fun segment. Uh, where we'll speak our minds and our opinions on uh, certain foods and stuff like that in the Italian culture. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but without further ado, you ready? Let's go. Espresso time. All right, let's do it, baby. So first question, first mm-hmm. question. Here we go. What do you think of mafia movies? Do you think they represent Italians well? If not, why? Uh, that's a funny question. Um, that was said by Ashton McMaster. So growing up, I feel... When you heard Val's and someone's last name, everybody would be like, oh, is your family in the mob? Yeah. Is your family in the mafia? I'll be the first one to say I absolutely love mafia movies. I love Goodfellas. I love Bronx Tale. I love Sopranos. Casino. You know, the list goes on and on. But that doesn't, like, characterize every Italian in the world. Yeah. At the same time, I quote movies like that a million times a yeah. day. So I think mafia movies are just that. They're mafia movies. They're just, they are what they are, and you shouldn't take it for anything more or anything less. Yeah. No, nah, honestly, that's a beautiful quote. I think you hit the nail on the head. Mafia movies, to me, have always been very entertaining. Uh, some very comedic. Some do teach Italian family values, and they sprinkle on that a little bit, as you see in The Sopranos. Uh, they do a great job in, in terms of showing the value of a family, right? Mm-hmm. We, we know that much, but, um, you know, it shouldn't, represent everything you know in the Italian culture or believe mm-hmm. that what you see in a movie is what's going to be expected is what's in real, real life. life. Yeah. And I, I, you know, it goes way deeper than does it portray Italians well? No, of course not. You know, we're not, mm-hmm. we don't want to be seen as, you know, we're associated with the mafia. But I feel like either as a society or a culture, we, we've kind of failed to promote the good side of the Italian culture as opposed to the bad side. We get like the, the media just takes over and the media always you know what they want you to see is what you're going to see you're not going to see the good stuff you're going to see the something that creates conspiracies or uh contradictions you know that's what we're here for yeah exactly that's how we make growing up italian right you come here for comedic relief you come here to be educated and and you know learn a little a thing or two about the culture and we have fun in the process yep. so whether you like it or not at the end of the day we're going to just we're, we're going to try our best to educate these people as best as we can and that's you know, a good question though yeah, very good question. I didn't mean to go on a whole rant over there. All right, number two, Nicholas Desant. What's the better part of being Italian to you, the food or the traditions? Both. Well, yeah, that's what <laughs> or he said both. At the end. Or both. <laughs> I mean, listen, we have amazing traditions, but you got to think of it like this. Our food is so much bigger than our traditions. Yeah. Because everybody eats Italian food. Like, pizza is the most ate food in the world. Yep. Like, how crazy is that? And that's, you know, that's an Italian thing. thing. It started originally in Napoli and completely uh, finessed it since then. So it mastered it, to say the least. I guess my answer is is food because you could ask anybody in the world what pizza is. They know anywhere in the world. You assume Italian automatically. Yeah. You're right because they don't think tradition. You're not going to know. you know, making tomato sauce in, yeah. in September, you know. Or, you know, whatever tradition, like, you Christmas have Christmas Eve, you know, to other Sunday people, dinners, never, you know, like, yeah. if traditions, you're Italian, people, not everybody knows. Right, But right. everybody knows our food. 
So better part of being Italian to me, I got to be honest, it's, it's close, but it's the food as well. For, for the same exact reason as you said. For me personally, like it might be the traditions, like, you know, spend time. I mean, nah, it's the food. Nothing beats that, but bro, food's a part of your everyday yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. You know, traditions. You gotta eat. Tradition at most eat. is once a week, and that's Sunday dinner. Yeah, yeah. You Obviously, gotta eat every day. Yeah, you're eating every day. That's that's why. Six it times a day, too. <laughs> All right. We got Mario Lopez Fosade over here. Uh, how Sabino become an Inter fan, and how Rocco became a Juve fan. Oh, he knows about us. So <laughs> He knows about so us. So how did you become an Inter fan? So this is a true story. Or no, no, we never met him. He passed away before um, we were born. Before, uh, no, no, the um, year before I was born. Yeah. So a couple years before you. Mm-hmm. And um, I just remember growing up, like we had a Nana and Nana's house. She had an inter keychain on the where the keys were, and I used to always see that. They're like, no, no, was an inter fan. That's how I kind of became an inter fan because we also had like Ronaldo at the time, yeah, Adriano. So inter was sick at the time too. So that's basically how though. More or less. I know, and I should, honestly should have followed the footsteps. And that's and you became that's, because of your uncle and Sasana, right? Yeah. So, you know, growing up here, where our we have the same no no here. Obviously, like Sabino said, we didn't get a chance to meet him, but he was an Interista, and you know, I just didn't follow that path. Instead, I went with my side in Italy that I used to visit every summer. And you they used to have it. the games going all the time, and it, it was just an addiction. Of course, growing up seeing Del Piero, like. How could I not be a Juventus yeah. fan, you know? So you grew so up watching... I, I grew up watching uh, Italy all the time, the Azzurri on Sundays, Formula One, and Juventus. Yeah. It was always that combination. Listen, it could have easily changed if, like, my dad was a Juventus fan or something. It could have easily changed, you know? Yeah. You and, never know. And a lot of people say, why are you not Napoli fans, you know? Because we're from the Campania region. Yeah, I mean, in that case, why aren't we Salerno fans? Yeah. You know? know? Because they suck. Because they suck. <laughs> they won like two games. Uh, this is a good question. Nicolette Bove. Bove? Bove. Or Bove. Do you guys have any non Italians in your inner circle? I'm the wrong person to ask that question. <laughs> we honestly, it might be like I have so many friends of so many different cultures, of so many yeah. different ethnicities, so many different nationalities. This is what I'll say. Everybody I'll be Italian, friends with bro. anybody as long as they don't disrespect the Italians. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, all my friends, no matter if they're, like, Puerto Rican, whatever whatever their race is. Mutual respect. Yeah, like, everybody loves Italians, and they, they crack on what we do, and they also follow this page, you know? Like, a lot yeah, of people they show that, love. They show love. Like they, they, that that's funny. That's the funniest part is that people that aren't Italian say to me all the time, like, yo, I love what you do. So, right. it's kind of funny how Italians don't say that to yeah. me. But people that aren't Italian say it. Yeah, and, so, I, and I love seeing it, not to cut you off, but my friends, uh, I also have a lot of uh, Hispanic friends, and they're like, yo, like, growing up, I experienced a lot of what you post on your yeah, page. Yeah. So, it, it's cool how they it's can relate everybody. to the content, too. But yeah, not even through growing up at time, but, you know, I went to school, we both went to high school in Queens, one of the most diverse, it's the uh, diver- most diverse, diverse cities in the yeah. world. So, yeah. you know, we grew up, Always showing love to everybody to this day. So, but shout out to say, all my guys. I will say this real quick. Our followers and our page, you don't have to be Italian necessarily to understand everything. Like, I feel like a lot of people who are first generation mm-hmm. kind of deal with the same thing. Like, getting beat with a wooden spoon, getting slippers thrown at you, opening the cookies and finding sewing mm-hmm. kits. Like, yeah, yeah. It's not just Italians. Like, nah, nah. Some of it is just for Italians, but not everything. Yeah. So... You know, growing up Italians, not only for Italians, but just people that grew up with ethnic parents, I think. Yeah, that's a great point, bro. Love it. Preaching today. Oh, we got Ultra Boy 1. This guy was a good, good in church over here. Good school in How many times have you fly to Italy? How many times did I? Like, how uh, many times have I been you? to Italy? Yeah. I've been to Italy over 25 times. Yeah. Sorry. Like, maybe 26, 27. I don't you, know the exact amount. Were you you're 30 years old? 31. 31. So and I went every summer except, went, like, three, and then I went... Two winters. I don't know exactly how many. Yeah, about. definitely in the high 20s for you. I would say in the 15, 16 yeah, 15, range 16, for yeah. me. But I think Easily. you've been in Italy for a longer amount of time. Because you always used to go yeah, for go two f- months. Yeah, you go for a crazy amount of time. Because your mom had her whole family there. Yeah, exactly. Rock's mom is the only one here out of like four brothers and sisters? Uh, five. Five. So yeah. for her, it's like going a- every to summer, for two months. Yeah. Yeah. She had to do it for a long time because that's the only time she'll get to see them. Valentina underscore G-I-U-L. Why can't I go outside with what hair? <laughs> it's 
pretty obvious, no? <laughs> you're gonna get sick, sweetheart. Well, you're gonna get cold. That's the most. That's the number one rule for Italian mothers. You Especially never go this outside. time of year. <laughs> this is the perfect time of year to get sick too. So don't go. Don't go outside with wet hair. Dry it up. Put a freaking towel on it for 10, 15 minutes. Put your hoodie up. Put your hoodie up, and or else you're gonna get sick. And don't walk in the house barefoot either. <laughs> Uh, AV209, West Coast Italian culture be East Coast. I have no idea what y'all on the East Coast Italians be saying. Bruh. Is she writing in English? Or so? I don't know. <laughs> she, she wrote way too much in West one sentence. West Coast Italian culture. I get what be, she's trying to say, though. What's she trying to say? So she's saying, like, on the East Coast, we say, like, oh, how you doing? You know, like, on the West Coast, they don't know what that stuff is. Or I, I, the fact that I would say gabagool as a joke, obviously, they're like, oh, don't. Say that we say gabagool. Don't say all Italian Americans say gabagool. Uh, us on the West Coast yeah. don't do that. I don't know why that is though. Why didn't like that? The how you doing go West Coast? You know, we we need a West Coast I Italian. How it travels here. well in the sun? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. I, think, I don't know if that's what she means. West Coast Italian culture be East Coast. I have no idea what y'all on the East Coast be saying. I have no idea what she's saying. How about that? <laughs> All right, Joey Dr. Five Eight Six. I don't recall my parents ever giving me allowance. Common for my paisans. You got an allowance going on, bro? <laughs> nah, I got I got a roof over my head. <laughs> yeah, and, and a hot meal every night. Allowance. You're allowed to stay home. <laughs> no such thing as no. I allowance. mean, our, our our dads both owned uh, businesses. I feel like we started working super young. Yeah, that was my allowance working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we got compensated for it, so. I, I remember guess. I used to get paid ten dollars a day, bro. <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, why is you this the, a little?" You get the murder of home for getting payment. <laughs> nah, but they told uh, you the value of the dollar, though. I gotta yeah. give it to them. I remember when I first got my first flip phone, <laughs> and uh, that's took when you, took you a year to save up at, for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I used to pay my bill back. Now I don't pay my bill, but back then I did. Isn't it funny how things <laughs> it's funny work? How it works. I'm on yeah. a family plan now. You know. <laughs> You'd be stupid not to. Yeah. Uh, all right. Vanessa93. And then this is the last one of the questions. Then we get the next segment. Full meaning of this and the hot pepper. <laughs> so this is a condor right? Yeah. So when someone's talking about you, like, oh, you look good. Like, you just put this in your pocket right here. I don't. <laughs> and you hide it. <laughs> yeah. Right? So any, anybody giving you. Evil? Yeah. You wards off evil when you do this. Uh, and the 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 cornicello or the red pepper, as you have the emoji there. That's the only reason why I'm saying it. It basically is the same thing. You're countering yeah. uh, the evil eye. So that is that. All right. Next up, and I'm excited for this one. We got overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. Now you don't have to apply each of them to a category. They all could be all yeah. underrated. They all could yeah. be perfectly rated. They all could let's be do, overrated. Let's split it. Tan desserts, cannolis, fajitas, tiramisu. Overrated? Overrated, underrated, perfectly rated. So cannoli, what are they? Perfectly rated. Perfectly rated. Cannolis are by far the best dessert, and absolutely nothing could beat a good cannoli. Okay. A yeah. fresh filled cannoli with good cannoli cream is perfectly rated. Beautiful. Sfogliatelle. Overrated. Why? My Napoli Dons are going to kill me. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, listen, there's better... There's better desserts, you know? I'll go for a pignoli cookie over... A sfogliadel? Three, three pignoli cookies over a sfogliadel. All right. And the last one in the dessert section, tiramisu. Perfectly rated. Why? I mean, listen, tiramisus also have a lot of variations. The homemade tiramisu is amazing. Like, you know, when it sits a little bit and you have that mascarpone. Yeah. That's real, for me, real tiramisu, and it's absolutely perfect. But sometimes, like, the store ones, they could be, like, a little dry, you know? So you're talking general tiramisu, perfectly right. Yeah, perfectly right. I, I agree with all three of yours. All right, next up, Italian food. Yeah. So this, now I'm going to ask you. No, 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 you do this one, and then I'll, I'll hand it over to you oh, for the okay. next one. Italian food, overrated, underrated, perfectly rated. Chicken cutlets. Underrated. Because wow. they're so damn good. <laughs> I mean The way I'm trying to say Is like Chicken calls are so good They deserve more they praise They deserve more praise <laughs> But All They right. are already So much praised Yeah That they should be praised more Okay So Fair versatile enough. You know Like Get home Some fresh cutlets You know A little well, salad know. on the side There you go Alright next one I'm very curious What you're gonna say for this Chicken parmesan Overrated Wow that's quick Overrated I, I, How I, you I say 
underrated for chicken cutlets, but overrated for chicken farm. Because some people, like, when people ask me, cuz, where's the best chicken palm in the city? I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you saying? Like, don't get me wrong. All the ingredients are fire, but cuz, uh, like, come on. We make it better at home. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. Like, so if you're going to have chicken like, palm, have it When home. people ask me, where's the best chicken palm in the city? I laugh. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Like, there's competitions for this? What are you <laughs> talking about? All right. So that's why I say under um, overrated. Last one in the chicken section over here. Chicken marsala. Perfectly rated. Yeah, I agree. This is a... Uh, why? It's a good one. But listen, I prefer the chicken franchise, you know? Okay. And I don't even think that's a real Italian dish. Like, all the Instagram police that follow us, like the Italian Instagram police, <laughs> they're probably going to flip and say it's not a real Italian dish. I don't care. It's good. <laughs> all right. Rock, so we're going to ask you some uh, Italian foods. You're going to say overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. All right, let's get it. Let's get you it. get the appetizers, all right? All right. Fried calamari. That's perfectly rated. A good fried calamari, you can't beat it. That'd be fresh. It's yeah. hot. You have to eat it within, like, the first five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Hot, uh, crunchy, and the marinara sauce with the lemon. It doesn't get you better than that. Both, it's the best. It's the best appetizer. You put the lemon and the? Yeah, yeah, both. I like it with the marinara. Uh, eggplant rollatini. <sighs> Honestly, I- I'm going to say underrated. I feel underrated? like a-, a lot of people sleep on the eggplant because there's better options, but sometimes the eggplant definitely deserves more love. And if that ricotta is done right and the sauce is not sweet, then that's a banging eggplant rollatini. Underrated. What about burrata? Oh, burrata. Uh, honestly, th- I'm going to get crucified for this one. I think that's overrated. Ooh. is overrated because sometimes I'm just not in the mood for that that creaminess that it's just not too refreshing it's kind of heavy to start up yeah, like appetizer is, is, you want it nice and easy burrata is kind of heavy sometimes so what about like a cold antipasto platter we're talking like sausage yeah no nah, that's super per- sad. that's perfectly rated you can't go I mean they call charcuterie boards now yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call it cold antipasto yeah yeah no so antipasto is perfect perfectly rated. perfectly rated but you hit me with the burrata that's burrata that's okay. overrated all right cavatelli with sausage so sausage and cavatelli yeah like a nice you know no nah, that's that's perfectly rated I love I, cavatelli is my favorite pasta. So anytime there's cavatelli, I'm 100. You you should have that anywhere you go. You see cavatelli in the menu, you have it. I promise you, it's delicious. Lasagna. I know your answer to this. <laughs> lasagna is 100 percent overrated. Like you yeah. can't tell me that you have <laughs> lasagna more than once or twice a year. Like and if you do, then you're, you look you're like crazy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no reason you should have it more than once. It's just a craving and a once in a blue moon. That's just me though. I think it's overrated. Spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti. That's a hundred percent overrated. Like, <laughs> come on, <laughs> that's like the epitome of a, what everybody thinks Italian Americans eat. Spaghetti yeah, and yeah, meatballs. Yeah. In Italy, they don't even have that. But I don't think I've ever had spaghetti with meatballs. Now that I think so, of it, so I've had like penne with meatballs. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, like There's spaghetti with meatballs. I don't think I've ever had. We usually like cook the meat and then put it in a bowl and then make the pasta. You still have like yeah. a little bit of the meat left over. Yeah. But the spaghetti and meatballs, I never understood how that was a thing. I don't know either. Like, what do you do? You get the meatball and just mash it with the pasta and twist it up. You take a, you put the fork, take a bite, <laughs> put it back. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent overrated. 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 Uh-huh. That's it. Oh, uh, that's overrated. Underrated. Next time we're gonna have a couple more. As always, you know, it's been a pleasure. This is my first sip of espresso, by the way. Well, no, no. Ciao, everybody. Ciao.